Area of polygons given coordinates of vertices. Now we want to look at a scenario that involves finding area of any given polygon and the only thing you are given are the coordinates of the vertices of uh, these particular polygons. So you can apply this formula to any kind of polygon, be it a triangle, be it a quadrilateral, be it a pentagon, a hexagon, it doesn't matter whether they are regular or irregular. So long as you can have the coordinates of the vertices, then you can apply the formula. So let me take you through how we can find area of this particular triangle here. So I'll pick a starting point. Let's say, let me start with coordinate of point A. So I will write my coordinate there, 2, 1. Then I'll go to B, 7, 1. Then C, 3, 5. So when you are writing the coordinates, choose a direction you are going and make sure you are consistent with that direction. Don't skip a point. For instance, you see now I was moving in the anti-clockwise direction. So I will be going around my figure in that kind of manner. So once I reach the last coordinate points or the last vertice, that is vertice C of 3, 5, then I will repeat the coordinates of the first point. Then, once I'm at this point, I will uh, do cross multiplications. So, I will cross multiply in this manner. So, I think you can see my, my arrows, the way I'm placing them. So we shall get a chance to do the same. So let me just flip this one a bit. Yeah. So just, uh, yeah, it's okay. Now I can put it there. And uh, can also bring this one here. And then lastly, I can bring my other arrow there. So once I do this, these arrows are guiding me to see the numbers I'll be multiplying. So if I multiply 2 times 1, this will give me a 2. I can write it there. 7 times 5, this will give me a 35. 3 times 1, this will give me a 3. On the other side, 1 times 7, this will give me a 7. 1 times 3, it will give me another 3. Then 5 times 2, this will give me a 10. So once I'm at this point, now I'll go ahead and make a summation on both sides. So I will add 7 plus 3 plus 10. This will give me 20. And then I'll have 2 plus uh, 35 plus, of course, 3. This will give me 40 here. So then the next thing is I will subtract the 2. Now for area, we will have a half. We shall multiply by the absolute value of 20 minus 40. So by absolute, we mean that uh, we shall ignore the negative on our value because 20 minus 40 is negative 20. We shall only take it as a positive 20. So this simplified will give us 10 square units. So the area of our triangle becomes 10 square units using the Milos formula. Let us look at another question. Now there's a question here that is involving a hexagon. 
y hexagon because it has six sides so if you can check the working on the right here you'll notice that these coordinates have been arranged starting from the coordinate of a but no you can start from any point what we say is make sure once you start and choose a direction you be consistent so i chose to start from a that is one one then i went to b so i chose to move to them in the clockwise direction i could have moved in the anti-clockwise direction still it will not change the solution so a b c d e f like that then you remember to repeat the first coordinate of one one at the end there then you do the cross multiplications i've done them in blue so at this point what i'll do then i'll just uh, take it up from here so we shall add on both sides if i add my values or the products on the left this will bring me to a value of 52. now remember to subtract uh -huh. if i add on my right this will bring me to a value of 20. so then to find area i'll simply say a half multiplied by the absolute value of 52 minus 20 this will be a half multiplied by 32 which gives me 16 square units so that's how we get area of polygons you can try with any other polygon that you can think of i'm sure it will bring you to a very nice answer and you can prove with other methods so that's the end of my presentation you can continue checking out for next videos thank you